everybody. Happy Monday and welcome to Collider TV Talk, TV Talk for TV fans. I'm your host, Nate DeFries, and this is the weekly show where we bring you the latest news from the world of television, plus talk about the week that was in TV, or in this case, an epic freaking weekend in TV. <laughs> <laughs> Joining us this afternoon is... Josh McCuga. Sinead DeFries, so good at her job. She crushes it every week. Uh, guys, amazingly packed show today. We're going to talk Glow, the Preacher premiere, the finale of Fargo, the finale of Better Call Saul. We're going to talk about The Mist and why I wanted to walk into Mist after I watched it. Uh, all kinds of stuff today. I'm really excited. I don't know how we're all going to get in an hour, but we're going to do it. Sinead, who else is here? <laughs> Weighing in at, no, I'm just kidding. Also <laughs> here is Emma Fight. Yeah, Woo! I. but the thing is, Josh, is like the the way the mist was, if you walked into it, it wouldn't guarantee that your life would end, so. Or more just thick fog. Sure, right, you might just like get, if you wore glasses like I did, they might just get a little fogged up. <laughs> a little fogged up. <laughs> yeah, it'll hold you back a little bit. Hold you back a little bit, yeah. Also yeah. here is David Griffin. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Griff! Griffin! <laughs> well, uh, I'm here. I'm here. I'm excited. I'm excited. I can't wait. There's a lot of good on the highs and lows. I have a lot of good uh, British shows I want to talk about. There's about three or four of them I want to mention that I know. I think Josh would like one of them, at least one. Well, I'm bloody good then, might I? <laughs> Fucking I. I think that's all. <laughs> that that is don't talk like that. But good, good. Is, are there boobs in it? <laughs> no, because, you know, British, mm, the British keep know, it classy. Then. It's classy mm -hmm. over there. Not, they, the, yeah. they keep it classy except not with their language. Like, you can no, say anything true. on British TV except see you next Tuesday. You have to get that approved. I've always been of the impression, like, you know what, HBO and it's like da 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 nudity and then strong sexual content, yeah. which oh, is yeah. like every Game of Thrones. I really wish they could be like yeah. B for boobs. Like, <laughs> like they could really break it yeah, down. Really, like, like D for dick. Yeah, correct. <laughs> like, oh, dicks in this one, I might skip this episode. <laughs> yada, yada, yada. Or like FF or full frontal. You're like, all right, we're getting the whole thing. I'm in. Because let's be honest, I will get into Glow, but that <laughs> pilot hooked me for a lot of reasons. One of them being. I forget what it was, but it was recent where you we were talking about a whole sh a show in its entirety. And you were basically saying, like, you're so not interested. And it was like five minutes about how the show was coming out. And then I think it was David who said, oh, yeah, and there's. There's, a little, there's some boobs, and you were like, all right, well, I guess I will have to watch. <laughs> yeah. I remember this reason. Well, I forget what it I was. Think, well, I, I think it was a handmaid's tale. I was going to say handmaid's, handmaid's tale, yeah, because yes. I, yeah, I, I brought up, like, well, it was kind of nice to see boobs on Handmaid's mm -hmm. Tale because everyone had been, like, so sexually repressed. Yes, and then all of a sudden, it's like, repressed, repressed boredom, and then Elizabeth Moss goes off, and I'm like, well, I'm in. <laughs> guess who's watching the rest of this one? <laughs> Come on, boobs, no whammies. All right, Shane, uh, what's first? All right, Watchmen, a movie from 2009 that a lot of fans would like to forget, but more importantly, a 12-issue graphic novel from Alan Moore is back on the docket at HBO, this time with Damon Lindelof. Zack Snyder, who directed the ill-fated 2009 film, was originally working with HBO, but that deal went dry, and now that Lindelof is finished with The Leftovers, what, he's what? got time to work on The Beloved Watchmen. David, what would you do with Watchmen if you were Lindelof? I have a few ideas. Uh, one of those, in 2012, DC released this whole Before Watchmen series, which some fans found a little controversial because Alan Moore, Alan Moore is just off in his own world, you know, you know, kind of studying magic and all that kind of stuff. That's what he is. He's, he's, he's a magician. He's in the magic. Um, so I just hope that one day, like, my, you're not like, Josh is off in his own world. He's now a magician. Like, my life has taken a weird um, turn. Well, it's, it's actually chaos magic. But anyway, he, that, that, that's what he's doing. Anyway, it's weird. That's what course, he's doing. So course. he's not writing. He's not, well, he's not writing. Uh, DC related books necessarily, especially with the Watchmen series. You know, he wasn't on board with the, with the movie. But what I would love to see is was a before Watchmen book in 2012 that went back and kind of told the origin stories of all the characters. So you had, you know, the comedian, uh, Dr. Manhattan uh, had, I had one there, Ozymandias uh, with art by Jay Lee, which was fantastic. If they went back and kind of broke down those characters that we like from the movie, which are very interesting characters, yeah. I think that could be a good way to go. I don't want them to redo the movie. Right. I don't want them right. to redo and the I graphic novel. I think that was novel. probably the Zack Snyder problem. Right, either yeah. go after the graphic novel, sure, or go before and do it before Watchmen. Yeah, did. well, because there, because I mean, there were so much of Watchmen is the history of all of the heroes mm -hmm. who came before the group that we're following in Watchmen. So it would be interesting to like go back and have stuff about like Silk Spectre and all yeah. those other characters. So I, I am so on board with Lindelof like being in charge of this. From the point of view, I mean, number one, I obviously love Lindelof's work. I'm a huge fan of The Leftovers. It was mm -hmm. a brilliant series, and. 
Alan Moore's style is so like because his style of storytelling is very slow and deliberate, and that's exactly that's what Lindelof TV. does. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it, it, I'm I'm really excited about this. That's like on going to be on Lindelof's gravestone. It's just deliberately paced. Yeah. <laughs> I I can't I, I can't tell you how much I disliked Watchmen. Like I watched it in pieces because it was just so boring to me. Mm. Um, I I disagree really yeah I, I didn't hate it yeah it, 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 had, it had some issues it, but I, I enjoyed it for the most part changed the ending mm -hmm. in a weird way that I didn't like I agree with you like overall I didn't hate the movie but I don't love it it was very loyal adaptation until the end yeah of course. yeah almost a lot of word for word yeah. yeah I don't know it just it really wasn't my speed as far as this being a series I'm like meh on it mm. like there's nothing there's not much of the, i mean i guess because i've never read the graphic novel shocker or anything <laughs> like that it doesn't interest me that much mostly because that movie left such a sour taste in my mouth that and, like the spirit was an awful movie that was like in a weird part like post sin city where they were like trying things graphically and nothing story-wise mm. it was like how crazy yeah. can we make these graphics don't worry about the script right. it's like sucker punch we don't have a script but the effects are going to be cool right and so that's how i felt about watchmen now Maybe I will be, my mind will be changed. Yeah, I do Lindelof, love, a, yeah, Lindelof, I know, and yeah. I do love a good origin story. Love mm -hmm. an origin story. So they were able to pluck a story, because basically season one of American God was all one origin story, like one yeah. giant origin mm -hmm. road trip, which gets me excited for yeah. season two. Kind of the same thing as Preacher season one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very much, I feel like if you were to tell me that Brian Fuller was doing Watchmen, I'd feel kind of the same way I do about Lindelof. It would obviously be yeah. a very different project, but I think that both of them like understand right. that like, let it breathe kind of story. Yeah. No, they're I mean, both comic book guys. Yeah, they like to read exactly. comic books, so they, they, they definitely respect the source material. Good source. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, speaking of source, we got the second trailer for Game of Thrones. Woo! Season seven, trailer two. There's Look a, at that guy. Look at that blue guy. The Knight's King. The, I'll tell you what, this trailer was friggin' awesome. The one thing that gets me excited about is how much Sansa Stark, I think, is going to be a very central character yes. in this whole season, yes. right? Yeah. I, She's a badass. I love Sansa, yeah. and I didn't like some of the changes that were made to the series from the books in regards to mm -hmm. her character, but she's come back from it and now she's like the character that I always wanted her to be. Mm -hmm. Like I, I've always in my heart, like sort of wanted Sansa to end up being the hero. You know what I yep. mean? Mm -hmm. like, yep. No, 100%. <laughs> What'd you think of the trailer? I love it. There's a lot of shots of these like big battlefields. We're going to get some huge <laughs> battle scenes. There's one shot of Jamie just, just riding through this like flame ridden yeah. field with like it's just him by like yeah I don't know where he's going there's no King way to Slayer. fight King Slayer. 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 Yep. you want to slay somebody but and, this, um, looks great. let me pull up uh, Emma you said his name the guy with the fire sword hold on Beric Dondarrion Beric Dondarrion yeah uh, that dude's friggin' sweet yeah. well it's like he almost like ignites it like 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 a light it was so like, rad. and then just starts going but up. it yeah. was so funny because like I had him like for two seconds when I saw Beric so in the books Yoren Greyjoy who mm -hmm. we met at the end of the last season he's the one that pushes the dad off the bridge yes right? exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. he has an eye patch in like it's a bit like they go out of their way to be like he looks crazy and has an eye patch and so mm -hmm. then he didn't in the show and I was like oh, is it nope that's Beric Dondarrion <laughs> oh got it so you yeah. thought that that was I for a second yeah. I was yeah. really yeah. excited mm -hmm. that he was getting an eye patch and going full crazy but right. he I, my understanding from everything that's been teased about this season so far is that Urin's going to be like a major mm -hmm. crazy villain awesome. this season and I'm stoked but there's a lot of story that they haven't told from uh, Dance of Dragons where. There's a lot of the uh, the Greyjoy storyline, yeah, you know, yeah. with, with, with the with the seamen, the, the pirates. Yeah. You know, we don't yeah, we don't get a lot of that in the in the series. Yep. Yeah. Speaking of eye patches. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um the the one thing in this trailer, like you said, battle after battle after battle. Yeah. Okay. We have seven episodes, okay? Yeah. We could get like a major battle in every episode. Yeah. yeah. It, mm -hmm. The amount of death and destruction that mm -hmm. is going on in this looks incredible. Now a lot of people are like, oh, it, just, it can't be all battles. It could. <laughs> it I mean, could. at this point in the series, where else do you go? You right. know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. they have escalated They're not going to introduce, like, another Karth. Right, yeah, yeah. They've escalated it to the point that, like, we're at, like, the war for Westeros. Yes. Like, it is there. Everybody's in Westeros. Yeah. All the major players are going to come into conflict with one yeah. another at some point this season. We have 13 episodes left. Yeah. Yes. And that's it, and we're done. Yeah. yeah. Until the prequels, the spinoffs or whatever, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I was at, uh, before I move on, I was at that Arroyo Seco thing this weekend, mm -hmm. right? And it was really quiet during Tom Petty, and people were, like, screaming out songs, and some guy just screamed, King of the North! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just, man, everybody's like, got a good laugh out of it. Yeah, John Snow needs to be aware of that. Any, anytime anybody yells out King of the North, it doesn't usually end well. No. So no. Hopefully, yeah. Is is the sword from Godric Dardarian? Say his name again? Beric Dardarian? Beric Dardarian. Yeah. Is that... <laughs> 
Uh, is that uh, like a good for White Walkers? Is that like have dragon oh, fire in it or something? Is his sword dragon? Glo- uh, I can't remember if it's made out of Valyrian steel yeah, or not. Know, yeah. okay. I think sure. it might be. Obsidian. I I'm is, just uh, want. Oh yeah, obsidian. obsidian that's yeah, the daggers. Yeah, that they, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I love the fact that all these Game of Thrones swords are being made as you know replicas, yeah. and they make an actual fire sword that's, that <laughs> has yeah. fire. Light on mm-hmm. fire. I'm buying the this. one. The one that Brienne 100%. has is because she has Jamie's sword, which is melted down. Ned had that. Ned Stark had that oh, yeah, huge Ned sword. sword. They yeah. melted it down and made two of them. Yes. Brienne has one of those swords. So Brienne's yeah. ready to go. Oh, yeah. She's ready to go. I keep forgetting that even though Jon Snow has one. Yeah, Jon Snow has one. Even though Brienne was like so has been so present throughout like at, at the point where we're at in the books like she seems maybe dead so like every mm-hmm. time i see her i'm like oh right she's alive yeah and um and uh um podrick especially like yeah. podrick seems really Jesus, dead in the books, podrick so. i mean christ that's why i, I won't spoil anything but there's a yeah. character that <sighs> brianne runs into in the books that yeah. we haven't seen that i don't think we're gonna see I, but i won't say anything, my understanding yeah. is we're not going we're not gonna to, see but that anyway character, yeah. anyway yeah. i'm excited yeah. for regardless and we talked about it last week we will obviously talk about every episode of game of thrones here on tv talk there will be an official game of thrones review show there may be like a lot of Game of Thrones content on the channel, so just be aware we only have three weeks. Yeah, it's on yeah. Uh, July, 16th. July 16th. I think if, if nobody's busy, I think we should get together and watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Duh. Yeah. yeah. Of we'll, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't really had a good viewing together. I, know. We I, know. I don't think we've ever watched a show together. David, hard we you... watch a show together via text. I you guys come over my place. Yeah. I, I have a good size house. You, you do have, over a, my place. Okay. You have yeah. a good size house. Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll, we'll That'll see. be fun. Okay, before we Maybe. move on <laughs> to our next topic, we actually, I actually had uh, the pleasure of sitting down with Kevin Jakubowski. I actually called him Frank before the interview started. I'm sorry, Kevin. Your name is Kevin. Uh, it was a botch. Everybody got a good chuckle out of it. I felt like an idiot, which is par for the course. Uh, Kevin uh, Jakubowski is, has a, a show right now that is premiering tomorrow on Verizon Go 90. It's called Play by Play. It's about a kid who eventually becomes an ESPN anchor and about his young life in sports and high school and everything. Very, very charming show. I really enjoyed it. Uh, Here is my interview with Kevin Jakubowski. All right, Collider TV Talk fans, here with a special interview for you guys, here with Kevin Jakubowski from Play by Play. Uh, It's coming out tomorrow on Go90, and I I was privy enough to watch the first three, but we'll, we'll just talk about the pilot and the series itself. Was this, this is a a little bit of inspiration from you, your childhood, everything, correct? Yeah, yeah. I grew up playing sports, and, uh, you know, I always wanted to see a show that kind of, you know, I think I think uh, jocks are portrayed a certain way on <laughs> TV, especially in TV comedies. I'm a huge Freaks and Geeks fan, oh. but the jocks got it rough. The best one, one season you know? of TV yes, in absolutely. history. Everybody absolutely. always asks us that. The show that was canceled way too early, Freaks and Geeks. Oh, but way yeah. too early. And this has a great Freaks and Geeks vibe to it. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, super inspired by that, and... Um, since I grew up playing sports, I just really wanted to to show something uh, that portrayed kids who played sports in high school a little differently. You okay. know, it wasn't always we weren't all dumb jocks, <laughs> lots of us. But you know, kids who play sports can be just as cool or dorky or smart or dumb as as anybody right else on. in high school. So that was sort of the look into it. Now this takes place in Illinois. Did you guys shoot it in Illinois? We shot it in Iowa, actually. Oh, nice. The cheaper version of Illinois. <laughs> Uh, Don't tell people from Iowa. No, that. Iowa's great, actually. It was really great. It yeah. was really, I think so many comedies, especially, uh, you know, are shot in Burbank to look like something else. Freaks and Geeks, for example, yeah. was shot here and it was supposed to look like Michigan. So it right. just didn't quite. So we got really fortunate that we were able to shoot in Iowa. It looks very Midwest. And well, you can great. tell. I think my. Uh, pet peeve is always when it's supposed to be cold outside and you can tell that the actors aren't cold yeah right they are very cold, cold. In this. yeah you can <laughs> tell the faces cold. look cold the, the language your language changes when yeah, it's cold out it does what's uh what what are your plans for because you were telling me before we we went on that you guys got renewed for a second and a third season already oh, we did yeah which is fantastic so eight uh the first season what what's the plans for the show well it's to really the show is about uh a kid finding his voice it's okay. about um an ESPN sportscaster who looks back on his life in the 90s and kind of gives the play-by-play of his adolescence. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, it's a lot like the Wonder Years, but with sort of this sports twist. Um, and the plan is to just watch this kid who thinks he, or at least wants to be this great athlete, mm-hmm. kind of discover that he's not, <laughs> and uh, kind of find his voice through sports writing and then, you know, sports becoming a sportscaster. Was this, uh, were, were you inspired by any one ESPN announcer? No, I, I just, you always look at those guys and they have such passion for sports Mm -hmm. and maybe some of them were great athletes, but I think at some point you, you kind of realize, well, I'm not the best here anymore and uh, I got to figure something else out. Was there a point in your life when, when you were playing sports that you were like, maybe I should be an announcer? (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) 
You know, I, uh, I I played hockey and soccer growing up. I was okay. an okay soccer player. I was a pretty good hockey player, okay. but uh, you got all your teeth, so you I do. Have been actually, naked. these are fake. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, that's a whole different story. But uh, Did but some yeah, some jock punch you in the face. No, no, no it was my own stupidity. Okay. Uh, but um, yeah, I think you know you realize as anybody who's not going to be in the NBA or the NFL or whatever yes. has that moment, and and for Pete, it's almost every day in this uh, in this series where he's like, this isn't really working out. Was there a girl that tore your? Because there, it, it's, I mean, at the base of it, there's a pretty amazing, you know, teen. Uh, lovely story of, a, of of the nerd guy chasing the hot yeah, girl. Did yeah, yeah. Was there a... There, I mean, it's interesting. Not, it, it, well, it's funny. I actually ended up, this is going to sound weird, but I ended up marrying my eighth grade sweetheart. <laughs> First girl I ever kissed. Look at you. We, like, you know, didn't see each other for, like, 12 years or wow. whatever, and then got back together. So there's a little bit of that there. Okay. But, but this is more just sort of the typical, I really like this girl, and okay. uh, there's probably nothing I can do about it. You know, the the I think maybe the greatest part about the pilot, and I don't, I don't want to spoil anything, but you know that there is going to be failure because it is a comedy, and obviously the funniest stuff comes in failure. But that almost moment of success <laughs> gives you a like a, a hope for the future of of Pete. You know, <laughs> do we do we get to see Pete win? Ever. We will. Okay. I mean, he's got to succeed at some point, but there's a lot of failure. I mean, yeah. failure is always funnier. So okay. <laughs> there's going to be a lot of failure for old Pete. Failure equals funny. I think uh, fans out there probably know that. What What was, I, I, I always kind of like the this in your head moment when you were kind of sitting around because writers, whatever, we all have ideas that just blink. What was that moment? Was it finishing the pilot that you thought this is I love this, or was there like, I'm watching the Dan Patrick show, you know what would be great is making an yeah. origin story of Dan Patrick. Well, that's a good question. I think for me, for this one, and a lot of times if I think it's a good idea, it's because of the combination of two good ideas. Yeah. So this was inspired by the, the high school that I went to, uh, which was this sort of sports powerhouse, this Catholic League high school that had been all guys forever mm -hmm. and then went co-ed when I started there. So it was a very <laughs> bizarre experience. Lucky you. Yes, you would think that, but that meant that like when I was a freshman, all the juniors and seniors at my high school were all guys. <laughs> so all the girls that were in my class wanted nothing to do with freshman freshman little dudes, yeah. you know? Listen, I went to an all co-ed high school the whole time. <laughs> freshman, it didn't matter if they were all dudes That's true. forever. Freshmen did not get girls. No, it's they fun. didn't. And this yeah. like compounded that. So that was one idea. I wanted to talk about that. Okay. And then the other idea was, I, you know, I, I like the idea of first person narration looking back and coming up with the idea that, you know, this guy was a sportscaster seemed to give it a bit more of a hook if yeah. you will. And so when those two ideas kind of came together, it, it felt like something. Well, you got something. I, I really enjoyed it, and I, I can't wait to see the episodes. So tomorrow, get on Go90, watch play-by-play. -play. Kevin Jakubowski, congrats on everything. Thanks, Josh. It's a very, very, I don't, I hate the word charming, because, but it's, it is an all-encompassing charming kind of a thing, but it, it took me back to the moments of my brother kicking my ass because <laughs> uh, he's two years older than me so i'm sure he'll love this show and congrats on everything and uh maybe season two and three we'll talk to you again i hope so awesome be great. Guys, awesome, guys. awesome 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 stuff that was a little premature on my part <laughs> my bad <laughs> ladies know what that was like when i was 16 all right uh kevin jakubowski from uh play by play thank you guys so much uh and congrats on the show again check it out tomorrow on go 90. let's move on to the fargo finale Listen, yeah. this is not a slight on the show at all. This is my least favorite season of Fargo, of the, of the sure. three seasons thus mm -hmm. far. But it's like you were dating a supermodel and she had like a weird toe. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, like it, she's basically perfect in every single way. But I got really tired of Thuelis. Is that how you say his last uh, name? Thuelis. Thuelis. Yeah. I got really tired of him. DM Varga. Yeah. yeah. DM Varga. I just got really tired of him. I have to admit when he turned out to be alive after all the elevator stuff i was a little disappointed i was like oh i kind of thought we were done with him but i agree i agree with you makuga that like and i think some of it for me too is that this season like in terms of it being a true story i'm like it really yeah right but i mean I, but it, but as you say like it, it's comparing like exceptional with just slightly less exceptional. Right, yeah. Because it was still a great season. Carrie Coon was oh, this whole season. Like, she, shh. 
she, well, yeah, I mean, between her and Mary Elizabeth Winstead, I mean, oh, they yeah, sorry. were Mary Elizabeth Winstead was just far yeah. and away mm -hmm. the strongest performers. And I was so bummed that Carrie Coon didn't get to Mary Elizabeth Winstead before she got shot in the head. I know, I know. Um, because I wanted like another. I wanted a confrontation between the two. No, Ewan, Ewan, Ewan McGregor too. Yeah, I mean, oh, as he a, was as fantastic. The Stussy Brothers was was awesome too, and I think I missed Ray the last half. Of the I time. did yeah, too. He was and, good. and to me, I think Ray Stussy was the most sort of lovely, surprising character for mm -hmm. me because when he's first introduced, you're like, oh, this guy yeah. is, oh, he's a shambles, like he, mm. and like not a hot mess in a fun way, like a. Ugh. But then, like as you realize that, like he and Mary Elizabeth Winstead's character, like Actually they love really each other. truly love each other, yeah. and. He really was just trying to do his best. You know, I I was very sad that yeah. Ray was gone. Well, I think what Noah Hawley's exploring here, he does it, I keep mentioning the book Before the Fall. And the reason mm -hmm. why I mention that is because if you, I just finished Before the Fall about three or four days ago, and there's some almost What's exact about? lines. Uh, it's about uh, a plane crash that happens. Uh, a guy who was, I guess, an unextraordinary guy who was on the plane with a bunch of extraordinary people, like heavy politicians, big businessmen, crashes. It's him and a four-year-old boy that survive. And then he has, the, basically, the whole rest of the book is him dealing with the, out, with the, with the fallout with that, with press mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. But it's all about these forces that hit you in life. You just don't see them coming, and they can change your life forever. VM Varga, David Thewlis' character, as well as Billy Bob Thornton, is a representation of that force yeah. of life hitting you upside the head. You see it in No Country for Old Men, too. Yeah. They're not relatable characters. You don't, VM Varga is not really a, a person, a real life person. You can't relate to him, but he's just a force of nature. He's like death. And, and like you, and like that, that that end scene, that stare down between Gloria Burgle and the Embargo, and like happen. you see the doubt in her face. She's like, maybe he's gonna win. Yeah, and it just cuts, and he yeah. might win. You know, because he's just a force of I, nature. That's I, unlike any ending we've seen in the series. Agreed. Yeah. And, and I think now, open ended. Yeah, I think now too, it, with your sort of before the fall explanation, David, and also thinking about it more, I think with. Thule is coming back at, in that end for that last stare down between him and Carrie Coon. Like that actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, no, I was supposed to be annoyed that he was still there because you just can't get rid of him. No, yeah, no, yeah. no. He was, he's, he's that, that itch. Every, yeah. you know, and I, I really like the twist. I, don't, I mean, I, the, of the woman who was there at the dinner mm -hmm. and that took over the business, right? Yeah. That she was working with VM Barger the whole time. Honestly, didn't see that coming. The, the show just... started with an interrogation scene. Yep. Yeah. It was in Germany, I think. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It ended in or an Belgium? interrogation yeah. scene. Yeah, in Belgium. Yeah, and it ended in an interrogation scene. Yes. In an yeah. interrogation room. That's yeah. kind of interesting. I like too, that I she had gone on to um, Department of Homeland Security, too. Oh, that like was yeah. awesome. That's a good like job. She got to step up. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What, if you, if you were going to rank this, would this be your. Three and in, in I'll do two of, season two, season one, season three. If I was gonna I rank, think I would yeah. do the same thing. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. But again, but like again, I did really like season three. Yeah. I just but I think it was my least favorite. Yeah. I don't know. I need to marinate on it a little more. There is something really I mean, if we're looking at this cast, Ewan McGregor, I think, obviously gets nominated. Oh yeah. For whatever. I think I would like to see Carrie Coon get nominated, but I think she gets nominated for Leftovers. Leftovers. Mm -hmm. But for And then I think I mean maybe Thulis gets it, but yeah. I really think Mary Elizabeth Winstead also gets a nomination. Yeah. And I think for me it would be harder for me to choose between Mary Elizabeth Winstead and Carrie Coon yeah. if Carrie Coon didn't have the opportunity to get nominated yeah. for Leftovers, which her performances in both were just so stellar. Yes. Yes. I just, I adore her and I need her to get nominated. Well, I'm also <laughs> excited too that uh, he hasn't made an announcement about Fargo season four. FX hasn't made a decision. Yeah. He can take some time and maybe do some other projects. Sure. Because sure. he has such, he's doing so, such a good job with Legion. <sighs> I know. Legion's so you good. Know? I think yeah. FX will let him do whatever he wants. I mean, we could wait a couple of years for Fargo. Yeah, yeah, we don't need another one. Yeah, yeah right away. Yeah. yeah. All good stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Another finale from last week. Uh, which we really haven't talked a ton about. We talked about the premiere, but yeah. then we really talked about, I mean, he's always been in high lows, but Better Call Saul, this season, uh, of, here's the thing with Better Call Saul, is I don't exactly know what the plot of this show is. Because there was a plot in Breaking Bad, right? This is yes. more of just like us waiting and watching how Saul became Saul, mm -hmm. right? It was just like a story about two brothers. Right? Yeah, a lot, a lot of know? it is about yeah. the relationship mm -hmm. between Jimmy and his brother. And, I mean, Michael McKean, the fact that he hasn't won anything for his role mm -hmm. as Chuck um, is, is kind of shocking to me because he absolutely crushes it. The end scene where he is destroying his house. Oh, that was yeah. so, the music in that scene yeah. timed with how he was just bashing everything in was like some of the most compelling television I've really ever seen. It really was. It really yeah. was. Um, but for me, that that scene almost like 
defines the entire show because Jimmy always like slipping Jimmy, right? Yep. He always seems to slip, and he yep. became an enemy with those older ladies. Oh. There was a beautiful part there at the end when he redeemed him to, to get her friend. I really liked that. I thought yeah. that was really smartly written, really smartly performed. Um, and but when he's tearing down his whole house, it's sort of like. You get a pizza and you're like, I'm just going to eat a couple slices. And then you eat the whole pizza and, and you get ice cream and you have like 17 beers, right? Yeah. Like he just went <laughs> nuts. And that's what this show kind of is. Like same with uh, Wexler um, is, you know, she's doing, she's doing, she's burning herself away and she crashes her car. And yeah. thing. Same with um, uh, Don, uh, Don Hector yeah. and everybody is, you know, you're doing it. It it's always catches up with you in this mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. The only thing I was disappointed with in the finale okay. is that it didn't start or end with Jimmy at the Cinnabon. This is the only uh, or song. Uh, it's the yeah. only season where it didn't end or begin the final episode at the yeah. Cinnabon. Because it usually starts at the Cinnabon That's at true. the beginning That's very and true. ends at the Cinnabon. Well, I'm I'm very curious about what's gonna happen to Nacho. Because I love yeah. that shot where you see, you know, Esposito's character like look over at him. Like he knows what's going on with the medicine because only like a couple pills fell on the ground and he handed her a pack of like full of like the, the right kind of pills about the medicine that he's taking. So I think he knows yeah. that he's in on it, what Nacho's in on it. So I want to know what that's going to happen to Nacho. He's not in Breaking Bad. No, no, no. And, so, yeah. and you know, Gus Fring, Gustavo, and Gustavo. you know, is, we, they, we don't really get him as Gus just mm -hmm. yet. Right, right. right? It is, he seems like a nice guy in Better Call Saul. But we obviously know that he is a, Complete sociopath. But I don't mm -hmm. think because I don't think he wants Don Hector to die yet because he no. has something malicious planned for yes. him. He's like, no, you're yeah. not dying now, man. Like, right. you know, trying to pound the life back into him. You're not going to die now. Yeah. And um, I think that he sees Nacho as a guy that he can't trust. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think that eventually, either Gustavo gets it, or maybe what happens to Nacho is that uh, the what's the, the the crazy Tuco. Tuco kills Nacho because we haven't seen Tuco since season one, really. Yeah, he went, he went to jail. I think he's in jail. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's in jail right now. That's true. Um, yeah, my heart just broke for all of the little old ladies in the chair yoga so class bad, yeah. when mm -hmm. they found out how oh terrible God. Jimmy mm, was. Yes. I was like, ah, yeah. oh, because that's like one of the worst. And, and I felt like they captured it so well. Like it was just a really well composed scene mm -hmm. with the back and forth of like, oh, sh shoot, he left his mic on. And yeah. it was no. the like, discover like discovering that somebody you like so much like is is a bad guy is a bad good person yeah. and just being mm -hmm. disappointed by people i thought they so just I wonder, portrayed I it about, so like, well when, he's got to get that money at some point yeah. yeah does he use that money to open up his office that we see in breaking bad Did what happens there so, i mean there's so yeah. many stories left un untold how many, how many more seasons do you think we i get? think breaking bad did five mm -hmm. maybe two more two, yeah so maybe so three. five if we get two. one, it hasn't yeah. been renewed yet. Yeah. yeah. Maybe they're gonna work with. Maybe they're in meetings with Gilligan now. Be like, hey, how much time do you need to wrap up your story? Trying to figure right. out. How, I don't know how what the viewers numbers are. It's been good. It's been doing well. Okay. It hasn't been great. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people. That's what I'm saying is the plot of Better Call Saul. There really isn't one. Mm -hmm. For the most part, mm -hmm. it's just like the plot is how do we get to Saul Goodman? Yeah. And I think for a lot of Breaking Bad fans, you know, I was talking to my cousin who like lives for Breaking Bad. He's like, I don't know, I watched six episodes of, Bre of Better Call Saul and just wasn't for me. Yeah. And I think it's because it's so deliberately paced and it's it's shot just like Breaking Bad and it looks just like Breaking Bad. It's not Bad, as but sexy it's not as Breaking Bad. Correct. Yeah. It's not yeah. Breaking Bad. It's not about like the drug, the drug trade as much. You get a little bit of that, but no, it's different. It's but not, weirdly enough, me. I'd like Better Call Saul. Almost more than Breaking Bad. I think Bad. it's more consistent. I think yeah. for me, too, with Better Call Saul, one of the things I like about it is that it does, like, this is a real origin story. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. origin stories are yeah. not, like, flashy and terrible things happen mm -hmm. to you. Like, it's gradual. And so I think that Better Call Saul really works. Yeah, yeah no, that's a good point. I, I agree yeah. with you. Um, uh, looking forward to the next season. I, this show is... <laughs> To rhyme with Better Call Saul, Better Call Saul is enthralling. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a really enthralling show that, that again, doesn't do a ton, but you see a ton. Yeah. Um, sh before we move on to talk about Glow, because that's next, and we all came in today on friggin' Cloud9 about Glow, uh, get your Twitter questions into Sinead. Hashtag a Collider TV talk. She'll be taking them, correlating them, all that good stuff, and we'll take them at the end of the show. Let's move on to Glow. Listen, we talked about this when the pictures came out. We talked about this when the trailer came out. I was because I feel like the last few months like, we've been getting really excited for shows mm -hmm. yeah. that haven't been great. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah. This show was amazing. 
Okay, I watched all 10 episodes. I know Sinead's only watched one and a half. You've watched half the season. Yep. Mm -hmm. Emma and I have both finished. Yes. I won't spoil. <laughs> when you guys have a chance to finish, hopefully by next week, we can all get together and, and discuss it. But let's talk about like maybe the first couple episodes yes. and then the series as a whole. I know it's going to sound like classic idiot frat guy Makuga, but when Allison Brie got naked in the pilot, I was like, I don't care what happens in this show. I'm watching every single episode. <laughs> but she is, I don't know if it's like purposefully that she's never in makeup unless she's in the ring. Right. <laughs> or, or that they're just really trying to dumb her down because she's a gorgeous, gorgeous girl, yeah. and they really dumb her down. When, that, for this. when, the, when the director was like, "I can't tell if you're good looking," you're like, "Man, yeah, no." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mark, <Good looking. laughs> if, if you ever, have you ever watched Marin on IFC? Have you ever watched? Oh it? yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Marin on IFC is okay. He's a comedian. He's a comedian. Yeah. He's a comedian. He's, he's great. Has the most famous he's, podcast yeah. in the world. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? He's, in, he's interviewed the president. He's yeah. Oh, wow. The president came to his garage in Highland Park here in LA. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's, Which it's one? So good. What the fuck? It's called yeah. WTF. Obama. WTF. Yeah. Obama. Yeah. yeah. President Obama, Obama was yeah. on WTF with Mark yeah. Barron. Yeah. It's wow. really good. It yeah. is the greatest I, podcast. It's amazing. Um, there's a Mike Judge podcast, mm -hmm. and I was getting ready for that Complex Con thing that we never got. That we never got to do. But I listened to the 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 Mike Judge podcast with Mark Barron. It is. So fascinating. Mike, Mike Judge from Silicon Valley. Yes. And King yes. of the Hill. Yeah. Oh, yes. oh, wow. And Beavis and Butt. Yeah. Oh. So uh, Mark Marin is the director. This whole series, uh, Marin is good in, in, uh, on IFC. Mark Marin as this director. Peace. He's, he should get nominated. He was literally, mm -hmm. I, he was everything. He was so perfectly cast. It's it was unbelievable. And I don't want to spoil anything because he has some really interesting storylines that come in later on. Yeah. And like his, managing to balance being kind of an asshole with somebody that you really care about is, mm -hmm. it, it's brilliant. It really is. Um, and I'm not a wrestling fan at all. Like I couldn't care less about wrestling. <laughs> I've never been a wrestling guy. But after I finished Glow, I went and watched, there's a, there's a documentary about Glow yes. on Netflix that then I, I then watched. Became a, mostly obsessed with like three separate things. One, I thought that the casting of this show was absolutely perfect mm -hmm. yeah like the the chemistry and the weaving okay there may be as the series go on like there's a couple side characters that you really don't care or know mm -hmm. much about like the two women that play the old people and then they have the oh yeah the two I don't hairdresser wanna, ladies i don't yeah. want to give away yeah, an amazing yeah. part yes, with yes. them because you guys right. haven't seen it yet but <laughs> there's an amazing part with them that, that is really really well done really but they're funny. side side characters but melrose and and uh, the, you know the, the machu picchu machu, machu picchu, picchu and, and the, the welfare the queen and sheila the wolf <laughs> sheila the wolf oh, well, was so adorable oh, like she was so great as the series goes on i'm telling you the, the character development in this and i said it before we went on air this has changed my whole perspective on tv in one single way mm -hmm. we don't need hour-long shows anymore you don't a, yeah. an hour-long drama you don't need it this is not per se a comedy there are a lot of good laughs in here sure but this show was the easiest binge i've had half hour long shows you get your point across yep. the writing was perfect the development was amazing and it's 10 episodes yep. this is like encompassed everything that's perfect yep. about tv it's it, the thing that i really really loved about this series is that they definitely addressed sort of the theme of is this exploiting these women or is this empowering these yep. women and they handled it in such a fantastic way where like just by the end of the series you're like no this is this is the greatest job any of these women have ever had because yeah. it's like they get to develop their own characters mm -hmm. and and it's like he's like, giving them like their names like the girl from uh, Mr. Robot. Oh yeah, he's like you're an Arab girl. He's like I'm not. I'm Indian. No, yeah. no, yes. you're Arab. Yeah, you're a terrorist. Like yeah. here, take the machine gun. I yeah. mean, but like they were playing into yeah. those stereotypes so well. One hundred percent. I yeah. think. And it, and it it goes back to honestly, um, in Game of Thrones, Tyrion Lannister has mm -hmm. this quote where he basically talks about how you need to become what everybody see, what everybody yeah. thinks you are, because then they can never use that mm -hmm. against you. Yeah. And that like that's encompassed in the creation of these characters. It's like you know what we're gonna we're gonna address these stereotypes mm -hmm. because that's what people see and kind of through wrestling we're gonna change people's minds about them in a weird way it's, it's, yeah and allison brie is a vision what do you think Shanine? i really liked it i thought it was so fun and, and it's so different yeah but like but different in not man like people try to be so different with tv sometimes yeah. or it's like you either go too far or you just try to remake all the shows and right. there's there's never like something that feels original that's just like speaks for itself right. yeah. and the show is so good but i i have to say like casting wise from the very beginning, every single person that started talking, like when the, when they're lined up, first episode, and he's meeting all the girls at the audition, mm -hmm. 
even before that, like random people speaking out in the crowds when he first announced that they were doing a wrestling audition. Yeah. Every single line in this show is written perfectly. Like it's just it like has a purpose. it just it works. Drives and it works. Yeah. And there's not extra like fluff. Um Alison Brie is so adorable. She wait she's, this this she's entire show so good. like I was in love with Alan Brie Alison Brie since community. She was great in community. Right. Yeah. And obviously as Mad Peter Man. Campbell's Mad wife Man. and yeah. Mad Men. And home and her from husband s- in the or not her husband, but um Betty Gilpin's husband on Glow was also on Mad Men. I know he was also uh, on yeah. Mad Men. Yeah. yeah. Um Homegirl from Scott Pilgrim. Yes. Oh, Alan Walsh. Nice Chow. I love her so nice much. Nice Chow. Yeah, nice I love her. I love her so much. Yeah. And she sat down with bleachers and I was like, uh, oh my God, this is happening. To, you need to finish the series you guys, today because I'm her you. stuff at the end is so, She's so good. cute. I came home late on Saturday and I was falling asleep with the cell phone hitting my head to try and not wake up Amanda because I was trying to keep watching Glow because yeah. I was so addicted to yeah. the show. Yeah. I think for me it's, also, it's just, it's like you were saying, Sinead, like that, that very first moment where they're in the audition and you just see this whole like rainbow coalition of women of like different races and shapes and sizes. And it just, it felt so refreshing mm-hmm. and real, but it was fun. And not forced. Yeah. Not so forced. Sometimes that can no, no, feel no. forced. No, yeah, it was it not forced. Yeah. No, it was good. very, very natural. As you say, it's like they clearly set out to do something different, but they weren't like pushing home the idea of we're trying to make something different and make a statement. They're like, no, we're just going to make a real show, yeah. a show that feels <laughs> This like was... real life, and he is hilarious. Mark Maron is hilarious. I know. He's, he's like, like I feel Wait, like this. His, his whole story, the whole show, it it never gets older. Because sometimes yeah. a character like him, like a yeah. curmudgeon, can yeah. get exhausting. No, it's so it's never, so funny, and like his lines are so refreshing. But the well, I was laughing so hard, and he's like. Like I feel like you're hot. Like when I first look at you, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. and he's like, but then I'm like, uh, I don't know. Like, <laughs> oh, she's hot. But wait, is she? Yeah. Yeah. And I was she just doesn't like, know what to take. Yeah, yeah. and she's like sitting there, like, and then when he's talking to Cherry, and yeah. he's like, well, oh yeah, she's Cherry's like, oh yeah, great. you've seen my stuff, and he's like, well, can you even act? And she's like, freeze, motherfucker! And he just all he does is. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, he's just so, I don't even know. He's so yeah, he's so and I, really good. And he I think really it's is. just like the the whole character arc for everybody and by the time you get to all of the re- like the wrestling stuff i was like this makes me because number one I, I don't know if you guys know this uh the movie trivia showdown is a wrestling show that happens to have movie trivia <laughs> it's really not a movie trivia show yeah. but it just like it inspired me to be like oh i want to work on my character right. and, like i want to i want to play a heel someday that looks so fun the, the beautiful <laughs> thing is is with allison brie as like this series progresses she is she wants to be that that classic theater actress yeah. you know? like, the girl like the girl i went to high school with who then moved to new york and then moved to LA. Right. Yeah. Yes. but she embodies that from the very beginning Even, i know like, her voice Yes. When you hear her speaking, when she's like, I'm an actress. Yes. Like she has the voice. The vocal of like intonation. That that theater girl yes. that I tried to forget that I was at one point in my yeah. life, you know, yeah. where like everything you do is I'm an actress. And it's yes. like the actresses in, in Los Angeles now that they say they're actresses, oh even God. though they haven't Vocal done anything in years. Well, she has that voice. I mean, in Mad Men, she's like, hello, Peter. Hello, Doc. Yes. She yes. sounded like Hepburn. She, she has yes. that old school yeah. and like it, And I voice. totally agree with you, Sinead, about the like, she, I, I knew that girl. I was that girl. And, and to see her journey from that girl into what she becomes by the end of the the mm-hmm. first season, it's uh, it's a yeah. delight. No. It's great. I adore her. And then one more thing, when she's like, "Come, come visit me. You never come visit me in Pasadena," oh, and she's like, "Oh, it's so far." I literally was That's like, "No one comes to my house. Bitch, no one comes over my house. Nobody ever That's wants to come is. visit me because Pasadena is, is so far." When I was so leaving far. the Rose Bowl on Saturday, I was like, "God damn, Pasadena!" I know. <laughs> That's where I live. L- I mean, literally, like, like, it's my <laughs> selling point. Is I was like, I have alcohol. Yeah, like always. I have wide roads. You can park and pass yeah. through this wide road. Like, you don't have to pay for. There's no permits. Yeah. Like, just come. I will. You it's can a, stay when here. When we came to uh, Harrison's birthday party, Amanda's looking around. She's like, "There's no signs." I was like, "I think we just parked." Just places. yeah. And, it's, yeah, well, well, cool. You walked to my house. She's like, "What is this place? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like in some foreign country or something?" It's literally just like a normal suburb, yeah. and it's so nice and yeah. so pretty, I, but it is so far. I love yeah. too, like all of the little jabs at LA things. Like mm. when uh, the casting director is talking to Ruth about how she casts some alternative projects. She's like, "Have you ever considered a?" Erotica. Yeah, and she's yeah. like, you mean like porn? Like in, in the, the valley? valley? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For the uh, record, we are in the valley. We, yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I venture to say, and I know I'm going to get absolutely destroyed, but this is top three favorite Netflix series. Yeah. For I've me, ever for seen. sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, this. Wait, what else is there? <laughs> well, I'm like, 
yeah, Stranger Things is up there, but like, okay, Peaky Blinders isn't exactly a Netflix original. No, That's it's DC. Not. No, no. no, it's not. I'm talking yeah. about Netflix originals, things like Stranger Things, like mm. Bloodline, like, um, uh, what's it called? Oh, House of Cards, House of Cards Orange yeah. is the New Black, that oh, kind yeah. of stuff. But Glow, for me, I don't know, it hit me in a really no. weird spot of just like, God, I really love everybody in this show. Mm -hmm. and, and there's some people that you shouldn't love. There's an amazing part in this, I think it's the second last episode where Mark Marin just says, you guys have any blow? Oh my like, God, yes. They're like, it's no. So and he's like, good. you want some? <laughs> So it's good. just like talking to these jazz musicians. It's just the show is really, really well mm -hmm. done, really well written. L I can't wait to see a season two. Yeah, uh, the way the finale ends, you guys will see it opens itself up to a season two. Yes. We'll talk more about this next week. We it's will. So good. I might even rewatch like the last three episodes. It's so like easy it so to much. watch. I know. I paused yeah. it at one point and there was six minutes left, and I was like, "What?" Yes, yeah. I know. It, I know. It's like the yeah. marvelous Mrs. Maisel, and that's an hour, but that felt like that I've watched four times. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's talk about Preacher. Before we talk about Preacher, uh, you guys can go onto the Collider YouTube channel right now, and you can see our uh, first episode of Comic Book Shopping. It's with Evan Goldberg, who actually directed the uh, premiere this season yeah, with, with Seth, Seth Rogen. Yeah. And it's an amazing episode. You guys can see it's with John Schnepp. Uh, they're at Meltdown Comics. It's really, really well done. Evan Goldberg is, is, is great in it. If you like comic books and you like Preacher and you like all this stuff, it's a really fun episode to watch. Also... We had the premiere last night, and it's a two-night event, so it's tonight as well. Yes. It's night, Monday night. So you can watch Preacher on AMC. We'll be watching it. That I know. Uh, yes. We were talking before that we've never watched a show all together, but this is one of those shows where we all text mm -hmm. about the show. So uh, if you were watching Preacher, first of all, I thought last night's premiere, this is the Preacher I thought we were getting yes, in season exactly. one. Yes, exactly. The shootout on the street with the Texas State <laughs> Troopers. So good. It was unbelievable. It was like it was like a cannon was shooting through those cars. It was mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. Yep. And you knew who it was, but you didn't know where any of the bullets were coming from. Mm -hmm. It was so well shot, so gory. That's it was Graham like, McTavish. Um, yeah. He's from Scotland. Graham yes. McTavish. He's an outlander, too. Oh, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> what does he do in Outlander? Um, that scene of him underneath the car trying to avoid being in sunlight. Cassidy, I love like Cassidy. This, I'm like, this is my exact sense of humor. Yes. Like, mm, it was the yes. funniest thing I've ever seen. It really, it's it's <laughs> such a darkly funny show because you know you're in the car going, come on, Ali. Yep. I yep. hate this song. Bye, Ali. At this moment. Yeah, he's like, it's <laughs> yeah. not that song. It's not that song. Not bad, yeah. Yeah. Also, too, for those of you who watched the premiere last night, uh, the priest in the show does something, you know, that I did not learn at seminary. I did not think uh, that all, all not religious a... people Were you locking do girls in cages? I did not lock a girl in a cage. That's not the way I would heal someone. Yeah. But you know, everybody's got their own tactics. Maybe, yes. maybe that works for them. Yeah. 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 Uh, it was it was a creepy uh but but the funny Hilarious thing about, scene. That's Hilarious what I'm saying. Scene. It was so funny because it was so dark. They like pull it and the girls oh, in the yeah. cage, like, give me your phone. You think she's gonna call somebody, but all she wants to do is post on well, Instagram. This is, this is part, you see Cassidy's face, like you know, the guy threatens her, like, Do you want me to call your parents? You hear in the background, no, please don't do that. And Cassie's just like what? Like, <laughs> don't you want your parents to know? And now, in the, what we're looking for God. Yeah. Because the first trade, he saw that photo of um, uh, Evan Goldberg holding up that trade. That trade is called Gone to Texas, I believe. Mm -hmm. The first one's called Gone to Texas. It's supposed to be a road trip. The first season was kind of like a prequel. Yeah. In a way. So yeah. now we're getting that road trip story. They yeah. are in Texas now. I mean, and, and literally, this like <clears throat> happens 15 minutes after yeah. the end of season one. Right. That's yes. where they pick up. And then they keep, you keep hearing hints of what happened to the town. Like, did you hear this town in Texas blew yeah. up? Our town right. blew up. How's like, that now? Yeah, what happened? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we weren't there. It, it, it really is a uh, just a very dynamic show. Do you know what I mean by yeah. that? Mm -hmm. It just seems like there's always something happening. I loved when he she locks the bathroom door and he punches through it. I thought he was just going to kick it open, but because <laughs> Preacher is such a boxer, yeah. Uh, you know, I think I was I was listening to an interview with with Evan Goldberg and Seth Rogen, and they were saying how they wanted the preacher to come across as like an old fighting Irish <clears throat> priest mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. would go to bars. He was the town priest, but he was also gotten sick ass bar brawls, and that's exactly what Preacher is. Yeah. Um, I loved how it ended. I love. I love Graham McTavish in this role. This, this show went from, I thought, like, season one started slow, ended amazingly, and this premiere is just electric. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think this feels more focused, because season one was a little bit up and down for me. Yeah. There were some highs and lows, but I'm so excited. I think they, they learned a lot from the first season. Yeah. This is going to be such a good season. This is the road trip show yeah, that you want to watch, right. yeah. not that thing we watched on Sci-Fi, which right. wasn't bad. I'd but... love the road trip with Ruth Nega. Yes. Oh, yeah, the... Uh, yeah, the... <laughs> My goodness, we're talking about like sex scenes and shows. Allison Brie crushed it. She, Ruth Nega is an unbelievably good actress. Now she's which, Academy Award nominee. Yeah, Ruth Nega I know. Yeah. And soon to be starting uh, Ruth Nega's Rutabagas with uh, me as her sole proprietor of her new <laughs> Rutabaga farm. 
<laughs> Ruth Nega, if you're out there and you would like to start a rutabaga farm, please enlist my help. You can tweet at me. So Facebook, a way to woman's heart now is punching down doors. Yes, I'm going to do yeah. it. See, that seems like the... Pu punching down doors or forcing your way through windows. See, that, yes. that, see, yeah. that, see, see if I tried yeah. that, I'd be in jail. Yep. Not because I'm black, just because you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be doing that. That's not a race thing. And just also, too, be... the last time yeah. I punched a door, yeah. I split my hand open. Yeah. So I'm not yeah. exactly yeah, a preacher. That, so. I love... Yeah, you know. It's just, I'd be arrested. Clarify. I'm not because I'm black, <laughs> guys. You're the friggin' just best. Just feel the need to I clarify. Yeah, because YouTube was like, huh? Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Hashtag, 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 hashtag Black Lives right. Matter. No, no, no. no, no, no. I see what you do. Save yourself. Save yourself. Gotcha. All right, Preacher, keep crushing it. Can't wait to watch it tonight. And we'll be doing, like we did last year, we'll be doing a Preacher review on every yeah. episode of TV mm -hmm. Talk. Mostly mostly because we love the show, but also because we have so much TV that isn't around right now. Yeah. Like the summertime, it's it's the summer of George. It's the summer of binge. We are going to crush some binges. You, A lot of people have been tweeting at us like, hey, why don't you talk about shows that you guys didn't talk about? Because you did. That will, well, that will happen this yeah. summer. We're going to choose some binges. We're going to go on things that we should have talked about months ago, but now that we're watching, we'll get to. Mm -hmm. I know David uh, just recently bought a flat in London, uh, so right. he's really excited. Yeah. And Wales. I was in Cardiff this past weekend. Yeah. Watching a new show I'm excited to talk yeah, about. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, <laughs> let's move on to The Mist, then we'll go into Performer of the Week, Highs and oh, Lows. Uh, let's do, let's <laughs> do The Mist. Let's the just mist. do The Mist real quick. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, that's right. Oh, is, that, is that The boy. Mist outfit? That's The yep, Mist. That's, that's The Mist. It's, that's it's the just gray. It's just, that, just clouds. Here's the thing. You didn't, you didn't miss anything. Hey. Good one. Thanks, Cody. Hit that spoiler alert. I was, I, this show was I was gonna watch brutal. it, I promise you. But yeah. then I like I was reading the synopsis and I was like, no, I just don't feel like it. Just, I don't no, I, d I don't care. Yes. <laughs> put put this town under the mist. I don't care about anybody. I really don't. Uh yeah. I didn't like this show. I thought it was just not good. And I'm I'm sorry. I, I try to be positive about something. Here, I'll be positive about something. The girl from Vikings is in it. Yeah. And I really like turning Princess Vikings. Aslog, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Alyssa Sutherland. <laughs> watch the movie. With Sam Witwer, I mean, it's and uh, Thomas Jane. It's it's an incredible movie. Obviously, a great short story yeah. by Stephen King. That doesn't need to be dragged out no. into a multi-episode series. Well, and on top series, of that, yeah. it's like in the short story. If I'm not wrong, it's like the story is about a mist that kills people. Yes. The end, basically. <laughs> There's I mean, no explanation of what it is. No, 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 no yeah. explanation about what it is. It's more complicated than that, but not a lot more. Yeah. And in this, it's like. People are able to go in and out of the mist, and it's sort of it's sort of implied because there's a guy in the mist who like runs into the like <sighs> gardener next door lady yeah. um, with her husband in the mist, and he's like, "Are you real?" So to me, that implies that like, like he got out of the it, mist, right? And that like, but when you're in the mist, it like makes you see things like. I, uh, and and uh, again, none of that appeals to me, nor did this show. And the characters are just very like. I mean, you have the daughter, and she has like her gay so boy or gay friend. It's just, it's just, it's just so generic. Like, there's no, they're not interesting. And people you know, to watch. The, you know, the gay friend was the one that sexually assaulted her. Oh, I'm sure oh, that's yeah. a twist. I'm oh, sure yeah, it's a I'm twist. Sure that's I'm sure and it was yeah. so also because she's yeah. like, he knows what happens to me. Yes. What happened to me? And it was also just so like predictable too with like the the scene with the the gay goth boy and his parents and the mom being like you know your dad won't listen to you if you have eyeliner on it's like yeah bitch. it's just a little too it's stupid like no did a good so job 13 nose. reasons why did such yes. a great job yes. exploring right. high school kids and yeah. this show does not do high and school nope. kids in the well, wake yeah. of 13 reasons why right. like this just feels so yeah. blah yeah. with yeah. all the high school kids stuff yeah. if you guys want to see an awesome show with uh Alyssa Sutherland go watch Vikings yeah watch Vikings watch yeah she's Mist. great Princess Aslog yeah, all right I'm great. done you guys want to be done with this no, yeah let's all right. move yeah. on let's move on Allison Keene performer of the week take it away Allison knock it out of the park clatter.com head tv editor Hey everybody, I'm Collider.com TV editor Allison Keen here with the latest pick for TV Performer of the Week. All I really need to say is, are you watching Twin Peaks? It's one of the weirdest things I have ever witnessed and I once saw a girl covered in peanut butter roll around a playground as an art installation. The revival of David Lynch's Twin Peaks has been a weekly what the frack experience, but the only thing really holding it together for me is Kyle MacLachlan as, well, a multitude of characters. He's reprising his role as Agent Dale Cooper, but since he's been in the Black Lodge for the last 25 years, he returns to our world as a replacement for the homunculus Dougie Jones. As Dougie, McLaughlin has to basically play a mute child, and it's incredibly frustrating yet insanely endearing to watch. He gives Dougie so much pathos and unexpected humor because he's just so pure. And yet, in this last episode, or part, as they are called, we got to see a flash of Agent Cooper's personality coming to the surface when he is able to thwart a little person assassin. Twin Peaks. 
McLaughlin also plays the epitome of evil in a character known as Bob. Now, in the original series, Bob was played by Frank Silva, who passed away in the late 90s. But his character, Bob, inhabited the body of Agent Cooper at the end of the original Twin Peaks show. So having McLaughlin play Bob makes perfect sense. And he's really, really terrifying in that role. Even when it can get a little campy, he never lets us relax or feel comfortable when Bob is around. So you have McLaughlin playing two vastly different characters, sometimes three, and I've always really praised actors who take on multiple roles within a show, especially when they make you forget that the same actor is playing those characters. We saw that recently on Fargo with Ewan McGregor, and one of the best of all time is Tatiana Maslany on Orphan Black. But this week, the honor of our TV Performer of the Week is going to Kyle McLaughlin for Twin Peaks. You just keep doing you, Dougie. And Josh Makuga, I'll see you again in 25 years. Or, you know, just next week. Bye. All right, Allison Keen. You guys can check her out at Keen TV. Uh, she's awesome over there on Collider.com. All the Collider.com writers really do an amazing job with television. So thank you, Allison. Uh, we hope that you come out to L.A. soon so you can be on our panel here. Uh, okay. Let's go into some highs and lows. Let's knock these out of the park. Start with Sinead. Silicon Valley finale. <laughs> Silicon Valley, Valley finale. finale. Uh, gonna miss TJ Miller. Yeah, I thought it was a funny way to end the finale. <laughs> really funny. Um, uh, overall, this is probably uh, top five comedies in my f mm -hmm. uh, in uh, in HBO history to me. Yeah, it's I think great. It's just yeah, really definitely, definitely watch Silicon Valley. Yeah. Up. Veep finale. This show. This was. They, all of their finales have a really weird twist on the whole season. Mm -hmm. This finale was so, so well done. This is the best comedy in the history of HBO. You may yell at me about Curb Your Enthusiasm. You may yell at me about some other shows, but mm. Veep is by far, it's so fast and smart, you almost have to rewind it. All right. George R. R. Martin's Night Flyers novella at Sci-Fi. It's I'm another so space show. Yeah, but it, it, it's Sci-Fi. You have space shows <laughs> on so Sci-Fi. He's just, it was so If this is like the yeah, Home right. Garden Shopping show. Network, then maybe not. This is Sci-Fi. You put space in Sci-Fi. Next. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, Orphan Black. Oh, man. This show is so creepy good. I almost didn't sleep last night because I was watching it and I got a little creeped out at the end. Uh, Orphan Black crushing it. What's next? Genius finale. This so was good, man. So awesome. good. Both guys. Awesome. Yeah, the Flynn is the young Einstein. Yeah. I mean, Jeffrey Rush is the older Einstein. It was just so well done. Season two, we're getting Picasso, yes. I believe. Yeah. I'm, I can't wait. I really wish, there was parts, I wish they liked a little less of like maybe his love life and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But I really loved older Einstein and uh, Jeffrey Rush, so charming. I think both of them will get nominated. I hope that stories, I hope that, it's just so good. Watch, watch Genius. I know more about great. Einstein than I do Picasso, so I'm looking forward to yeah. Picasso, mm -hmm. for sure. All right, yeah. what's next, tonight? Twin Peaks. Wow. Strangest hour of television I have was, ever uh, seen. I've, I've read a lot of reviews saying that it was anti-television uh, in <laughs> he's the most trolling. beautiful way yes. possible. But he's, he's not. Trolling. But I don't think he is trolling. Okay. So I have to give some credit <laughs> to our buddy Eric Goldman at IGN because I was like trying to collect my thoughts on the episode and I read his review and I agreed with a lot of the things mm -hmm. that he said, which was basically that this is David Lynch's version of an origin story. It's, yeah. the, it's the origin of Bob. Um, from what we can tell, it seems like in 1945, there was some sort of nuclear disaster at this testing site or something that either created Bob or like allowed Bob to be released. He was spewed out into of something that looked no, like And I don't Bob. know what that yeah, was. I don't know what like, that you just is. like yeah, spewed Bob. out and you saw his face and it was creepy. And then you saw all that black and white stuff. And I think that what was going on there, so obviously we saw the giant who was in the old Twin Peaks. In, in, in this he's actually credited as just like seven question marks. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the guy that looks kind of like Lurch from yeah. Adam's Family. Mm -hmm. And then there was that lady <laughs> in the sequin dress. And so I think that it was like the two of them found out that like this, this evil entity that was looking to possess people and make them murder on Others, found out that this was going on and so like the two of them created a weapon to stop Bob and that is Laura Palmer so it was it was just crazy and then like and then your descriptions make me Bob, more angry than the show and then Bob like goes into that giant bug that like crawls into the girl's mouth it was crazy and so it's like is so does that mean now that it's like, a frog Fly, spider, mosquito looking thing. Yeah. I, I made sure my windows were closed at night, so I was afraid <laughs> someone was gonna crawl on my window and get me. I'm not, so, I'm not watching. Yeah, this. so I'm like, yeah, I don't like know. That, I don't know you, yeah. if now that girl is like the first host of Bob, and there's a theory that maybe the boy who walked her home in, in 1956 um, is actually Leland as a young boy, oh. and so that's like how he ends up getting possessed by Bob, as he is for the whole first two seasons. Of, well, first like season and a half of Twin Peaks before you find out who it is, and and he like kills himself in prison. But anyway, it's a uh, weird show. Uh, I'm on. And there was a Nine Inch Nails concert, it like a whole like song. Twin They're Peaks just, is just like every restaurant in one restaurant. Well, basically, yeah, it's it's just confusing. I loved it, Chinese, but I have Japanese. No idea. 
I, yeah. Indian food all in one show. I, I loved it, but it was the lynchiest. Is Babu Bot? Babu's place. Babu Bot. Yeah. Bad men. Yeah. Bad, yeah. Men. Yeah. Very bad men. Very yeah. bad men. All right, what's next, Sinead? <laughs> Power season four premiere. Power is dope. Everybody talks about Power. It's such a good show. Watch it. It got renewed for two more seasons, so we have this season and a next season guaranteed. It's eight million views around all services last year. I'm gonna Watch revisit it. Power. It's so good. I'm revisit it's really, Power. it's really well all right. done. Wet Hot American Summer trailer. I giggled oh, the entire time, I, and I tweeted it out. It's it's one of my favorite. It, I mean, it's my, one of my favorite movies of all time. Agreed. Comedy. Uh, it's such a silly, just incredible, fun, stupid thing. People hated me for saying it's the one of the funniest things streaming right now, if not the funniest thing streaming right now. Um, oh, the the Wet Hot American Summer Netflix series. Yes. Oh, I love it. Yeah, and the trailer for season two, ten years later, just uh, ridiculous. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm all, right. all in. The Defenders poster. So lame. Like, it's so yeah, dumb. It's just like it looks. It looks like they a look generic like, like cover of like GQ. Or no, something. it looks like an old bad Goo Goo doll. Cut. Like <laughs> like we're the Goo Goo Dolls. And we're pissed. And our songs are gonna tell you about it. Like Jesus. It's Christ. not easy defending people, you know. Yeah, well, it's not, <laughs> it's not very good. I'm sorry. I, I was trying to pick love. Yeah, it's not very good. Sinead. Yeah. Uh, some show called Flaked. Flaked. It's if you uh, have ever been to Venice, California, and they spent any kind of time there, Flaked is so on point. Very inside baseball, but it's very good. Uh, Will Arnett actually pretty great in it. Woohoo! My hero. How do you say it? Academia. Oh, okay. Academia. Yeah, a All lot right. of people have been asking me to talk about this anime series. It's really great. The sports trials are over. Everybody's picking their superhero names, uh, and I love that one of my favorite characters is the little frog girl. Was the one who kind of got everybody back on track when they were all picking crazy, crazy superhero names. And then it looks like uh, Deku got maybe an offer from Gran Torino, who's All Might's old buddy, to intern with him. That's what happened. <laughs> my Hero Academia. Yeah, it's really cute. It's about a superhero school, basically. There you go. So sky high. Uh, broken. Sean Bean is back on BBC Wales. So when I was staying in my apartment in Cardiff, there's a show on BBC <laughs> Wales. There's a BBC Wales people. It's like ESPN3 or something like that. Why didn't they call it Welsh BBC? <laughs> Yeah, um, that's true. That's a good point. I'm bloody Welsh. I'm not British. I'm, I'm bloody, bloody Welsh. Welsh. Um, so it's a good show. So Sean Bean is a priest. He's broken. He has some issues. Yep. There's a woman in town Creepy. played by the lady from Marcella, the show Marcella yeah, that you I like. Love, yeah. She's broken too, and it's about two broken people trying to help each other out. It's a good show on BBC Wales. Check it out. Sean Bean. All right, what's next, Sinead? The worst news ever for Josh. Downward Dog has been canceled. Such a Poor problem. Josh. Why was it canceled? I thought I you said know. it was fantastic. It's amazing. I'm going to miss you, Martin. My road dog, dog. Shame. It's my buddy. Shame. And it was Sean Pittsburgh, the greatest city in the world. What's the next, Sinead? Uh, Legion is coming to SDCC. Yeah, Legion's going to be in San Diego Comic Con, so the cast is going to be down there. Maybe we'll see some new footage, and I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, Josh and I will be down there. We'll be down there. Everyone's going to be down there. We're all going to be down, be down, down there. there. Watching we'll TV, there. sitting in line, <laughs> using hand sanitizer. Josh <laughs> can't wait. I'm so <laughs> excited, guys. I'm so excited. Yeah. This Please. year at Comic Con, I'm not going to shake any hands. So There's a lot of knuckles. If you guys see right. me, you will be getting hugs. Yeah, or like I, a, or like it's a all elbow. just hugs. I heard it's way cleaner to hug people. Really? Yeah. And like, I'm so sick of getting. Getting the plague every year yep, at Comic Con. Mm -hmm. so. Don't get sneezed sick, please. Thank you. No yes, sneeze. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, uh, limited series based on Truman Capote's in Cold That's Blood. exciting. I mean, I, I love Capote. We already saw two movies. Yeah, about but it. that was about Capote. It wasn't about the actual murder, though. Oh, necessarily. So this is going to be more this about, about the, the, murder. the murder, not about Capote's relationship with the murder. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm All, right. Mm -hmm. All right. That's highs and lows. Let's do some Twitter questions. Woo! Sinead, hashtag a Clatter TV talk. What's first? All right, well, there was a report that Tremors is getting a reboot for a sci-fi pilot. Okay. Um, according to Kevin Bacon himself. Okay. So uh, Scott Curtis at Beach Dweller says, will this make Collider TV talk this week or next? Nah, I don't know. If they put the Tremors in space, then I watch it. <laughs> <laughs> put it in space. Um, if if right. it's for sci-fi, then... It the, could be. Don't they have to be in they space? They have to be. <laughs> if you're in sci-fi, you have to be in space, or you have yeah. to have the ability right. to go to space. It's like Tremor, it's like... First human mission to Mars, but yeah. also Tremors. Yeah. But Tremors is really funny as a movie. I don't want to see it as a yeah, series. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay with it. The first Tremors still well, Kevin holds Bacon up. Was so still good. holds yeah. up. Yeah. It's good. fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Sinead. At underscore Markel says, halfway through the year, what is your favorite show so far? I Glow. think mine is still Taboo. Yeah, I'm Ooh. Glow. Mm, yep. Halfway through the year? That's a lot of TV to talk about. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I can't remember anything that we've watched. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I'm going to also go with Glow, though Handmaid's Tale is up for up there for me. Yeah. Um, I can't, it's too soon. I, I can't. It's too much. halfway through the year. That's, I can't remember. I, seriously, I can't remember anything. Yeah, I, I mean, Taboo was good. It was it was good. Oh, Fargo the, oh, was great. Uh, I know I know in I, I, I know in Europe you got it before us, but for us it came out uh, this year. It was the, uh, the Young Pope. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Young I, Pope was great. I didn't really like. Oh uh, yeah, I watched like three. I'll be honest, I'm sorry, man. That. I know you loved it. I just couldn't get into really? it. Really? Yeah, I watched same. every episode and I was like, ah. Yeah. Yeah. But Taboo was yeah. good too. Taboo, Taboo yeah, solid. Yeah. All right, Sinead, let's do a couple more. Um, okay, Miss Absent Minded says, any good animated series you'd recommend? Animated series, uh, just like in general. Uh, I mean, there's tons. Samurai uh, Jack. 
Family, family Guy. Yeah, Bojack Horseman. Bojack Horseman. Bojack Horseman. Yeah. Um, uh, troll Hunters. Uh, troll oh, Hunters. Troll absolutely. Hunters um, Voltron, the Legendary Defender. Those are all Netflix series. Are all great. I was um, gonna say, I think everything we've listed so far is you guys can watch right now. Yeah, yeah. 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 And also, yeah. Um, and and the anime series that I just talked about, My Hero Academia. Like, I would put that on a list now of like starter anime for people because it's just it's really mm -hmm. cute and it's easy to connect. You with watch characters. that on uh, Crunchyroll. Uh, you watch it on Hulu. Well, it's yeah. on Hulu. Yeah, it's on Hulu and on Crunchyroll. Yeah. And if you miss like the '90s era decade of of like amazing animation because I know a lot of people like uh, I mean I'm young so a lot of you guys watch like the end of the 80s mm -hmm. but like mid 90s yeah. all the Nickelodeon stuff yeah. I always tell people to go yeah. back and watch that like Hey um, Arnold and Doug also if, Doug. if you watched yeah, Doug's on Hulu uh, Glow, I was Quail Man for Halloween one if you really? watched so if you watched Glow and are feeling like some real like 80s nostalgia um, Gem and the Holograms is all on Netflix <laughs> oh my god that's such a good show <laughs> it's so I, good I'm, that's my initials J-E-M Gem so uh, <laughs> my my buddy in high school got me a gem in the holograms t-shirt. I wore that thing till there was holes in it. It was hysterical. Yep. Uh, okay, let's do one more. One more? Two more. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> Three more? I don't care. Okay, uh, Luis DP79. Um, Gorgeous Sinead. <laughs> favorite TV show. Why did Sinead <laughs> pick that question? <laughs> I don't know. Um, favorite TV show theme song you have in your play playlist? I have Smallville and The Big Bang Theory. Oh. Um, mine by far is uh, Just the Ten of Us. And my two dads. You can count on mm. me. No matter. Sorry. It's amazing. There's, there's, <laughs> that was the golden yeah, age of yeah, theme okay. songs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was, I was <laughs> looking at you, but I was thinking, so I don't uh, think yeah. I heard anything. Yeah. I like uh, Doug. Do, do, oh, yeah, I was going to say, that's do, do, so good. Do, do, do. Mine is probably yeah. Tank from Cowboy Bebop. Oh. <laughs> the opening song from yeah. Cowboy Bebop is amazing, you guys. It's called Tank. Look it up. It's genius. One Punch Man's pretty good, too. Oh, One Punch Man! Punch Man theme is so good. One Punch Man! It's a good stuff. I, I loved, I actually loved that in every episode of Glow, the theme song was different. It was an yeah. 80s song, but, but they were all different. The opening and they, and the credits pilot, and the pilot. What? Opening credit in the pilots and then closing in the pilot with Journey Separate Ways. I mean, bam! <laughs> Ooh, Sinead. Ooh. Um, I don't know. Friends? <laughs> yeah, but like I always say Rembrandt's. friends. I was trying really hard to think of something else. All I kept thinking was friends. We saw a bassist a couple weeks ago outside of this lobster place in Santa Monica, and I was like, hey, can you play the Seinfeld theme? He's like, bup, 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 bup. and I was like, yeah. nice. Did you do yeah. the middle tip? Yeah, of course. Oh, good. good, good. Um, Get a uh, job. Derek Spicer <laughs> says, what's a show that loses its luster when you binge it? Orange is the New Black. Ooh. Yeah. House of Cards. House of Cards. I was gonna say House of Cards. Yeah. House of Cards started so strong. I just oh, got, I just God. burned myself out. It's a hard. Yeah. It's a hard. It's a tough binge. Yeah. Really tough. Yeah. Binge. yeah. You know what else is like a sickening binge is Sons of San Sons of Anarchy. I binged the first five see, I watched seasons that live. Yeah, so see, I, I didn't have to binge. The binge it. of that, I was like, oh God, that's a brutal so show. Yeah. 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 I think there are show. lots of shows that are actually improved by binging them yeah. too. Mm -hmm. That are not because like for me, and I I don't watch it anymore, but like I I binged like the first season of Once Upon a Time when it was on first on Netflix and then like I and the second season I tried to watch the show after that and I was like I can't you don't I, notice the bad episodes I can't, as yeah, much I you only, know I only yeah. I only like this if I can watch it all at once right. yeah. Bam. All right, um, one, one more, more. At D Moyes two says, "What's a show you thought wasn't for you, but when you watched it, you were surprised how much you liked it?" Oh. For me, it's The OC. Oh, OC is classic. Um, I think for for me it was Troll Hunters because I don't uh -huh. really watch yeah. a lot of anime, and I was really sucked into that show or anime animation anime animation, shows, anime, yeah. animation whatever. I don't really watch a lot of animated shows unless it's like Family Guy or like Episode Family, more like the adult humor ones. Like mm -hmm. Rick and I didn't think Rick and Morty was for me, and I watched Rick and Morty. I was like, I'm an idiot. This, this show is <laughs> friggin' so perfect. Good. So anything in like that animation where I kind of mm -hmm. watched it and I was like, okay, this is just cool. for yeah. me. I would say mm -hmm. the number one thing recently is Thirteen Reasons Why. Yeah, that oh. is not the kind of show that I gravitate towards at all. And I loved it. That was an easy binge for me. I loved it. Boom. David Griffin. Um, you know, that's that's hard. I don't know. I don't know. I don't I don't know if I can answer that. It's weird. I'm trying to think of one. I don't know. I feel like I know, like I feel like I have a good idea of what I'm gonna like and what I'm not gonna like, and it's usually right. Interesting. Mm. Fucking Mr. Cocky over right. here. Sorry about that. I usually <laughs> know shit, so fuck off. <laughs> that was a little cocky, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anything I'm sorry. you should um, mm. Well, I guess at the time, now it's kind of like who I am as a human being, but at the time, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was very out of my wheelhouse. Yeah. And that's kind of like what got me, like, cross the border into, like, full-on nerdum, yeah, you know? Sure, Before sure. I was, like, in the closet as a nerd. <laughs> I didn't want to fully embrace it. I was yeah. kind of embarrassed by it. But um, once I fell in love with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, that's cool. Good. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, this week, we have a pick of the week, and I'm, I'm going to have Sinead do her best Pick of the week I can't. for Emma. I, I just I have a I had a cough like all Sinead, last week. What if it be doesn't like come glow? Out? Fight through the pain. <laughs> fight through the power. Give me why, some why glow. Don't you, why, like, do, why don't you tell me? Because once David did it, now I want to hear everybody's pick of the week. I don't think I can do it. Would you like it. me to give you a little? It's a pick of the week. 
mic. I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> it's come from deep. You, got, you, I are, know, but you like, are a performer, Shanae. I've woken up every morning with no voice, so now it's freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> Emma's turn for the. I'm so nervous right now. I can't do it. No! <laughs> I, can't, no. Boo. I can't do it. Boo. I, Boo. I, like, I can feel. You're saying words right now. I can feel that it won't come out. And also, I'm partially nervous of blowing out my voice. Okay. I will do it on Monday once I'm full on okay. healed and Next finish Monday, all my promise? antibiotics. Mm -hmm. Next. Promise. Okay. But I have, I have to talk the rest of the week. Gotcha. Here. All right. You ready? We'll do it together. Do it together? Oh, yeah. boy. One, you want to get on it, Emma? Two. No, because she's going to turn Oh, yeah, of course. In okay. one. Two, <laughs> three. <laughs> Let's try it again. Over done. Over done. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So my pick of the week is a British television Whoa. series. Cheerio, Johnny Go Emma. Called the Tea Paradise. And crumpets, bangers and mash. Uh, it is about a uh, young Scottish girl named Denise who uh, oh, yeah. goes to. Uh, work in mm -hmm. for her uh, uncle, she thinks, but it turns out that he doesn't have any work for her, and so she ends up getting a job at the brand new sparkly department store across the street, and it is about all the drama between all the people that work at this department store. And I love that. It is so fun. It's so fun, and Denise is like... So it's like, a comedy? Uh, no, 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 it's oh, a drama. Okay, cool, yeah, cool, it's a drama. Cool. Uh, it's a, it's a, one of those you know British period soaps a la Downton Abbey. Nice. Um, but, uh, but the characters are really great, and Denise is like my hero because she's just like really good at her job and really smart, uh, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a awesome. delight. Sarah Lancashire from Happy Valley is like the woman who works in the nice part of the department store that all the girls want to work at. Yes, yes. You know, she's the kind of bossy woman. She's in there, too. Yeah, yeah, she's, yeah, well. she's yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the boss. The Paradise. Yeah. Yep. The paradise. the paradise. It's on Netflix. Emma Fives. Pick of the week. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we got it. you're on the clock for next I'll week. I'll do it next Monday. I promise. I All feel right. so bad because we we have to one of these days get through like more Twitter questions because there's so many. I know. Mm. Uh, next week we don't have as much TV to talk yeah. about okay, as we did cool. this week. This so was we, like a week of finale. Yes, too. Yeah. we'll get to yeah. a ton of Twitter for questions sure. next week. We promise. Thank you guys so much for watching. That'll mm -hmm. do it for us here on Clatter TV Talk. Before we get out of here, Schneid DeFreeze, where can the good people find you? Um, I will be at home resting and preparing for Monday. <coughs> um, you know, finishing my antibiotics. I'll I'll practice every day, I Good. promise. Um, but I'm online at Sinead DeFries and at that so Sinead.com. David Anthony Nightwalker Griffin. Nightwalker. Folks, make sure you're supporting Poldark out there. I heard the numbers are pretty good. I think it's like five and a half million, which is really good. It's like the second most watched show in the UK Jeez. right now. Wow. It's pulling in numbers, Poldark. That's Poldark. what you do. So watch Poldark, and I'll be at Griffin D on Twitter and Instagram. Watch Pole with you. Darkness. Mm -hmm. yeah. hmm. uh, there's a Pole Darkness on the edge of town. That's a new Bruce Springsteen sound. You guys are welcome. Shana uh, Emma Fife, where can people find Shanema. you? Shanema. 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 Uh, I can be found on Twitter and Instagram at my name, Emma Fife, E M M A F Y F F E. Uh, also, this weekend, I will be at Anime Expo at the Los Angeles Convention Ooh, Center. Fun. I will if be. If you weren't there, I would be. I would. <laughs> I would be completely yeah. like shocked, illegitimate yes. anime hosting. fan at that point. Yes, I'm going to be hosting the live Twitch stream from Anime Expo. So uh, follow me mm -hmm. on uh, Twitter. I will tweet out all the information about that, where you guys can tune in and uh, you know see me do some interviews with some of the guests they have down at the convention center and just hanging out. Boom, shakalaka, Emma Fife. I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga, Twitter and Instagram, the Josh McCuga. I just started this Facebook thing because uh, a bunch of people are saying I don't have a friend request or something. I don't know. So it's a public figure page now. Basically, post the same thing on Twitter. Whatever. You guys get it. And uh, the Josh McCuga show on YouTube will be back next Monday, breaking all the TV down for you. Thanks to Cody and Joey in the back. Thanks to Allison Keene and especially Kevin Jakubowski. Uh, check out Play by Play on Go90 and, of course, Preacher on AMC. Thank you guys for watching. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.